Colin Sanders and this is the History Books Review. This time I'm looking at Ubik, a 1969 science fiction novel by Philip K. Dick. It is normal when talking about Philip K. Dick to start by mentioning he wrote Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, on which the film Blade Runner was based. So let's not do that. Ubik is much less well known and I doubt very much it will ever be made into a film. It clearly falls into the science fiction category, being set in the 90s, which at the time it was written were 30 years in the future. So, with the passage of time, Ubik has now become an historical artefact. It gives us an idea about what people in the 60s thought was going to happen in the future. As such, it now merits the attention of historians. I won't describe the plot. For a start, it would spoil it if you were ever to read it, and it is a book I would certainly recommend reading for its entertainment value alone. Also, the plot is indescribable. I suppose you could call it a thumping good extrasensory perception thriller set in a mortuary if you had to give it a thumbnail description. It is also the first book I can think of since Dante's Divine Comedy, where a large number of the active participants in the plot line are actually dead for most of the narrative. But, as I say, I don't want to give too much away. And, as I say, the reason Ubik is in interesting from an historical point of view is that we see the author looking forward 30 years and making some predictions. He is remarkably prescient but needless to say he gets a lot wrong. He was writing when the Apollo moon landing program was underway but before it had been completed. He anticipates space travel reaching a level way beyond what's actually happened. The main action early in the book actually takes place on the moon and colonies on other planets are referred to. Now, that looks much less likely than it did then. He also suggests that we will have tapped into our currently hidden psychic powers. Well, that hasn't happened either. But other predictions are close to the mark. There are computer-based news machines that select the news the person who requested them might want. If he had foreseen interactive screens, he wouldn't have been that far off the internet. The other thing he got right was the increasing commercialisation of life. There is no sign of the idealistic hippie dream. Kettles, toasters and even front doors are all coin operated. It might differ in detail, but it's certainly in the spirit of privatisation and the unquestioned free market where everything has to make a profit for somebody. Nobody had heard of neoliberalism in the 60s, but Ubik foresees its logical conclusion. But its most prescient note is spotting the omnipresence of advertising. A striking feature are the ads that run through the book as chapter introductions for various incarnations of Ubik. Ubik, as in ubiquitous, is a brand that does everything. In addition to popping up at the top of the chapter, it is inserted throughout, much like the context-sensitive ads we all see when browsing online. This is product placement for the paranoid. Ubik does everything, but there is always a hint of menace. Here is a typical example. Has perspiration odour taking you out of the swim? 10-day Ubik deodorant spray or Ubik roll-on ends worry of offending, brings you back where the happening is, safe when used as directed in a conscientious programme of body hygiene. Ubik is a baffling, fascinating and ultimately disturbing portrayal of a world where nothing is quite what it seems. It isn't remotely realistic, but it somehow catches something about the world that is both true and that we would rather ignore. I'll be back to proper history next time, but in the meantime, thanks for listening.